Today I'm going to share with you my quilt called Illusions. Before we get to my illusion quilt, I want you to help me welcome my guest today. This is Maddie Bushman. Hi, Maddie. Hi, Kay. How are you today? Oh, just great, and it's great to have you back. Oh, it's such a delight to be back. You know, this is my favorite place to be. <laughs> Tell us about the project we're going to do today. This is so much fun. I absolutely love it. It's called Wonders of the Walking Foot. Okay. But with the Wonders of the Walking Foot, you can make any one of these crazy quilt purses. Okay. Or you could make a crazy quilt, there whatever you, you would like right. to do. And it's so easy. I'm going to show you in just a moment how to go ahead and assemble it with your strips. For this, I just used two inch strips. And you know, sometimes you have a lot of those left over right. from quilts that you made. So I keep them in a bag. And as you can see, I've accumulated quite a few. Yes, and beautiful ones. Well, thank you very much. What a compliment. <laughs> I think I'm going to set up the machine now. Let me show you exactly how that's done. First, we want to put the walking foot on. All right, I've already removed the original foot. So you take the walking foot and make sure that the arm goes above the needle bar. Put it back on and then you would replace the screw. Isn't that easy? It oh, is. I just love this, it's yeah. so easy. And then we're going to need to adjust the stitch width and stitch length. The reason we adjust the stitch width, you know quilters always want a quarter inch seam allowance. Oh, always. They never can change. <laughs> so in order to do that, we're just going to go ahead and adjust the stitch width, which will move the needle over, and we're going to take it on up to seven. Now that's going to give you kind of a scant. And then I like to take the stitch length down to 2.0. Okay. I'm all set. All right. Just that easy. <laughs> I absolutely love it. It's so much fun. Then I'm going to show you. You can see where we started, like, with a log cabin sort of loosely using that technique. Now, Maddie, I notice you're putting this on a denim background. Is there any particular reason why? How wonderful of you to ask. I use, I'll use canvas, denim, anything that has some firmness to it. That way I don't have to use interfacing, I don't have to use batting. The purse will have stability with just using a heavier weight fabric. Good idea. Well, thank you. Then you can see as I started, I went around and it's just sort of traditional log cabin. Okay. And then I would take my next piece. And you know, you always have to flip and look. Because Make sure you, the right side. <laughs> exactly. And that I like the color. And then you don't even have to use a rotary cutter or anything like that to do this. So then I'm going to go ahead and line it up with the line, place it underneath the machine. Oh, this is so easy and so much fun. Now, you want to make sure that you guide the raw edge of the fabric along the right-hand side of the walking foot. And then we just go ahead and go. Oh, I love this. This is so much fun. It relaxes me. <laughs> and then when I'm done, all I do is press the scissors, remove the fabric, and your threads are already cut and Exactly. In and then I don't even use the iron to press. All I do is I flip it over and finger press. Okay. And you can see how beautiful that's mm -hmm. starting to look. Oh, I just love this. Now <laughs> is when we get crazy. Are you ready to get crazy? Sure, why not? Me too. <laughs> so then I'm going to look and see how I can manipulate this to kind of get a triangle shape. Okay, so even though all the strips are the same width, it's where you put the next strip that, ah, oh, I get it. Isn't that wonderful? And then I'm going to measure again. And this is just an eyeball thing. You know that eyeball mm -hmm. thing where oh, you kind yes. of look and say, yeah, it looks good to me. <laughs> and you can see it's such a, a easy technique. You don't have to be accurate. I think you call this for your pointless people or something that like that. That would be a great project for them, yes. Oh, I just love it. And here we go again. And you can see you just continue okay. on around and around. Isn't that easy? And again, I just press the button to cut the threads. 
and I can continue on. Isn't that just so simple? And there you get a triangle look. Isn't that beautiful? Let's I'm take amazed. a look at uh, some of our your finished purses here. Well, first of all, let's look at the one that's going to be the opposite to this. Okay. You can see now where I've put all the pieces together, right, with the walking foot, the wonders of the walking foot. <laughs> Once you've done that, then you can move on and add your decorative stitches. And this, I like to, always like to show this one. Let's set that aside for just a minute. I love this because it shows what ease you have getting over the chenille or corduroys or silks or satins with the walking foot. It just mm -hmm. slides over it so easily. Regardless of what kind of fabric you use. Exactly. Okay, Maddie, I want to thank you. This has been... Uh, really great again, and my pointless people will really love you. <laughs> oh, good, I hope so. Thank you again. And let's go take a look at my illusion quilt. Let's take a look at my quilt here on the table. This is just one of the many designs that we can make after we make our squares. First thing we need to do though is select our colors. And I wanted this particular print. Those of you that watch my shows a lot know that purple and these shades of uh, mauve are some of my favorites. And I found this with leaves in it. It's a big overall print and I thought it would do really well in this pattern because we are working with big pieces. Then I wanted a medium shade because this print is dark. I wanted a medium shade and a light shade that would make that dark fabric just sort of pop. We're going to be making two different blocks. Right here I have the two. You can see that the large triangle is the same on both. But the position of the medium and the light are reversed. And we need that to give us a lot of design possibilities. So how are we going to start? First of all, we need to cut seven inch strips from our medium and our light fabric. And then sew them together. Now, as in some other projects, you'll notice that this light fabric is not the same as this. It's not, like I've told you before, no matter how much fabric you have, sooner or later you will run out. So I've substituted for my pieces, for my instructions, this piece. All right, so we have our medium and a light fabric, each seven inches sewn together. Our seam allowance is pressed toward the darker of the two fabrics. And then we're going to take this piece and cut it. And let's see here, we'll put it on an angle here. Okay, I want to first trim it up so that my edges are even. And I'm lining up a line on the ruler right here on the seam line so that I can keep it square. And I'll cut. And then because I need it cut just a little bit more, I'm going to slide my ruler down, line up again, a line on the ruler right with the middle and continue cutting. Now what we want to do is cut this into six inch strips. And I've already marked on my ruler the six inches from the edge. So let's turn this around and that six inch line will go right here on the cut edge. Again, we want a line lined up with a seam line to give us the accuracy. And we'll cut and then slide the ruler down. And I wanted to show it to you this way because some of you don't have the longer rulers, you just have the shorter ruler. And I wanted to show you that that is perfectly okay. You can work with it. All right, so we had seven inch strips sewn together, seam allowance is pressed. Now I'm cross cutting them into six inch pieces. Let's just cut one more piece here. Again, the six inch line is right here on the edge. The line on the ruler is right down the center seam. And 
and we'll move it so that we can cut the rest of it. Okay, after we have all of these sections cut, then we're ready to cut our triangles. And the way we're going to do that is, depending on which way we're going to cut, let's just take these triangles. We have the two opposite ones, remember. We have this one and we have this one. And so we need to cut these differently. And you know what? It's really easy. To get this one, what I'm going to do is to take the point of the Star Maker 8 and put it right here at the top. I have a, a point here at the opening that needs to be right on that seam line. And I also have some lines down here that I want to keep parallel. Okay, so we'll line it up. We'll cut this piece and this piece. And we have a triangle, a set of triangles like this. We have these two pieces. We'll take a look at what we'll do with those in just a minute because they're not waste. But let's go back to this piece. And now what we want to do is cut this triangle. And the way we do that is to just turn this piece upside down and cut it the same way. We put the point right here at the top, right on the seam line. This open inside point goes on the seam line. And we'll cut this piece. And now we have these two leftover pieces. And we'll put that one up here. Now, if we take these leftover pieces and line them up the way we cut them and just bring this one here, We'll sew it together and we'll recut and we have another piece of, or a set of triangles. So let's go ahead and sew these together. And of course you'll probably chain stitch. You'll go from one to the other. Just line them up. I'm going to start stitching at this wide end. It's a little easier to handle fabric if you start at the wide end and just stitch. And let's go to these two pieces. Again, line them up the way we cut them. Switch this over here. And we'll sew these two together. So there's very little waste in our triangles in this particular project. And just keep our ends together. Just cut these apart and let's take these now and we're going to press them. And again, we want to press the seam allowance to the darker of the two fabrics, which is the medium color. So I'm going to put it on my board with the medium side up, press it exactly the way I sewed it, then let the iron do the work. And we have this piece, take this piece. And this will really go together in a hurry. Okay, now we need to cut these two pieces. And when we do that, we line it up exactly the way we did before. And I've allowed a next, enough extra fabric here so you're not going to be too close. Line the point up at the top. The inside point of the Star Maker right on the seam line. And cut. And now we have another triangle, and let's take this piece and cut it. Then remember the six inch segments that we cut from this piece? We need to use that same measurement, the six inches. And we'll cut a strip from the dark fabric. Okay, and let's get our pieces lined up the right way so we don't grab the wrong one. And I have my dark piece already cut. And what we're going to do with this is to cut triangles the same way. 
with that point right at the top. We have lines here that need to be parallel to the bottom or to the top. And we have a piece here. We turn it upside down, the star maker upside down to cut our next piece. And the point right there. Make sure it's parallel. And we just cut as many of these as we need to match with these pieces, with these sets of triangles. Then what we're going to do is sew those together, just like this, and our opposite piece, just like this. So let's take a look at how we're going to do that. First of all, I'm going to start on a starter cloth. All that means is we're going to stitch on a piece of fabric, and it can be little, small, big, doesn't matter. We'll just start stitching there. So when we start to sew these two pieces together, we're not starting on these triangles, we're starting on that fabric. And it will make your seam allowances much more accurate. So we'll just sew off and onto our triangles. Okay, and and you can just chain stitch from one to the other until you have your triangles all finished. The next step would be to press the seam allowance and we want to press it toward the dark fabric because there are no seam allowances on this dark fabric. There are here. So we want to press it toward the dark so we don't have any bulk in the seam allowance. Let's take a look at how we'll do that. Get a few of these pieces out of the way here. Again, we want to stitch it exactly the way we sewed it. And then let the iron do the work and we'll always press it from the right side. And if you've been watching my show long enough, you know that I don't ever use steam when I'm in the construction process of a quilt block. Okay, and we have our finished piece. Let me just trim off that. And you might want to cut off the seam allowances that extend past the block here. All right, now we take our blocks and now the fun begins. We can either put it together in the design that I have for my quilt, or we can put it together into a zigzag pattern. Let's just get that zigzag going and just about any design that you would like. So this is the time when you get out these pieces and play together. Okay, and now let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to put the together for this piece. This uses eight of the one triangle and eight of the reverse triangle. So let's just go ahead and put these on here. Here we have one here. We'll look at our first row first here. And we have this one. As I say, it gets to be a jigsaw puzzle, but that's part of the fun of it. So we have these two that are alike, these two that are alike, and we'll sew those into rows. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to lay this right here and then take, hold my finger here so I know which side I'm going to sew on and take it to the sewing machine. Now I'm going to start up here because I have no seam lines that need to match. I have a seam line on this piece, but not on the underneath piece. So I'll just start stitching there first on a starter scrap. And then we'll go right on to our triangle piece and come down. Now at the bottom, we do have a seam line that has to match. And in this series, we've been talking a lot about matching seams. This is one that you can finger pin. It's at the bottom here. And I just have to take the seam allowances, line them up. I can feel them with my fingers. And there we go. 
and stitch. And then if you want to pick up these two, again, hold the side that you want to sew right here. And again, with these pieces, we only have this one seam line here at the top. So that's not a matching problem. This is the one that we're going to finger pin. See how those two line up right there? And you should be able to just finger pin. We get almost to where we need to finger pin them together. And then hold them right together. Don't sew over your finger though, that's not a good idea. Just hold them there until you get almost to that point. Okay, let's take a look now at our two pieces and put them back together again. Here we have that piece. And here we have this piece. Let's just cut that. Here we go. And now we want to sew these two together. And again, here there is no matching seam. Here we have one that needs to be finger pinned. Sometimes you'll get two seams on a side that need to match. Most times only one. And pretty soon we'll have one row done. And with luck, we've put them together right, and that is our row. So we have the beginning of a quilt. And if you look at the very bottom row, the one furthest away from me, that's exactly the same as this piece. So we have two rows the same, and to put it together, it would just be flipped over, and you can see it's the same as the bottom row. Now let's take a look at the next row and see which triangles we need. We have this one. And then this one. And here we have, no, nope, wrong one. We'll get it right here. This one goes over here. And this one goes here. Okay, so that gives us a divided piece right here in the middle. And this one has two seams to match. So let's go ahead and do that because that's, as I said, it has two seams. It's a little bit more difficult. It's more important than ever that we have our starter scrap. Now we want to push our seams. Now right here, our top seam is going in that direction or when I sew it away from me, this one is going toward me. And as we've talked in previous shows, that's the easiest one to match. It's called an interlocking seam. So we'll just let our seam allowances help us do that. So I'll line up the edges, check to make sure it's lined up, and hold it together with our fing fingers. And so part way down, And when we come close, this one, they're not interlocking. They both go in the same direction, so we have to hold them together with our fingers. Okay, and let's get our starter scrap off there. And let's take a look at these two pieces. And this is the way we want them to look. You need a quarter of an inch seam from this point to the edge. And that's so the seam allowance and the row can go together. Let's just uh, press these seams in the middle and we'll talk about matching that center. I'm just going to sew, press quickly this seam. And on this one, I'll go in the opposite direction. That always helps to match. So these are the two that are going to have to go together. And what we want to do now, we have to go to pinning. And we've talked about pinning these kinds of things in this series. We put a pin through 
right through the point, right through the point. And that's a holding pin. Then we take another pin and we put through in that same spot and follow the seam allowance. And make sure it, it just lines up there perfectly. Then when you go to sew it, it's going to match. All of your points will match and you'll have a nice looking quilt. I want to thank you for joining me for this series. For information on today's main demonstration, call 1-800-248-K. That's 1-800-248-5293. Or write to us at Kay's Quilting Friends, Post Office Box 456, West Branch, Michigan, 48661. Please remember to specify the program number. Kay's Quilting Friends is brought to you in part by Genomi America, Ot Light Technology, Clover Needlecraft, Sulky of America, and Brandies. Our thanks for joining us for this edition of Kay's Quilting Friends. We hope the ideas shared with you in this program will make your quilting more enjoyable. Please join us again on the next Kay's Quilting Friends. <laughs>